So we let the combine cool down and uh, shut the motor off and I also recommend that you do this at the back side of the field uh, away from the road uh, so you don't have to worry about the neighbors seeing you and uh, you, you can just take take your time and, and relax um, so that you can uh, walk around the machine here and, and uh, see if we can learn anything. Um, this combine um, has the front half of the rotor cage is what we refer to as the threshing area and the back half of the rotor cage is what we would refer to as the separating area. So we're going to start here at the threshing area and uh, the first thing you notice is uh, we've, we've got a lot of kernels uh, that are dropping uh, through the, the large wire concave and that's where they ought to, and what they ought to be doing and where they ought to be dropping through at. The second thing that I'm going to look at in this area here is I can see a few cobs uh, on the large wire concave and this particular cob right here is whole and also there is just one kernel, I saw one kernel on it um, that has not rubbed off yet. So whether I'm in soybeans or whether I'm in corn, you know, 80, 90 percent of the thresh it takes place in about the first 6 to 12 inches of the uh, concave here. And then from this point on back now we're going to start to work on trying to separate the cobs uh, from the kernels. Um, the other thing you can do in this area is, is take a quick look down into the auger bed. Uh, I'm going to grab a handful of it here. And this is what we would call um, the combination of all the threshed materials. So the mog material other than grain is in here and also the, the shell corn. I'm also looking at the number of, of uh, the, the kernels. Um, they're not cracked, they're not chipped, uh, they're, you know, there's no stress cracks in them. So I think we're doing fine there. But I do notice that when we're harvesting corn, obviously we take a few leaves in, we take a little bit of the top of the plant in, and so that's ground up material that's dropping through the rotor cage uh, at, the, uh, at the same time. So that, you know, spend a little bit of time and look, but I think poking around and, and looking at the cobs gives you an idea of how fast we're getting the, the kernels shelled off of the cob. Now we're going to move on back a little bit further here. This is what we would call the separating area of the cage. This one has a, a keystone grate in it and it's a lot easier to see the cobs. I can actually pull them out of there and there's no kernels on them uh, which is good because if we get a late uh, thresh on the cob uh, then obviously we're going to pick up a little bit of rotor loss as we go out the back end of the machine. So we're looking pretty good here. Larger pieces of material, whole cobs headed on out back the, of, of the rotor. The thing that I'm a little concerned about but not it really is not giving me any trouble is I do find some uh, entire cobs that have dropped through this grate because it is so large and they're dropping through and I'm going to have to deal with them on the sieve but really a large cob like this is going to shake right on out the back so I'm not that worried about it but for the most part uh, I'm pretty pleased with what I see. Uh, I've got a nice even spread here but the, the one thing I want to mention is the material that is coming from the auger bed onto the grain pan which eventually goes onto the sieve is, is a good six to seven inches deep and it's going to take an enormous amount of air to be able to blow the leaves and the husk and, and the red eye out so that we just drop the clean grain on down into the uh, auger down below. So all right let's uh, go around and we'll, we'll take a look in the back end of the combine. I did want to mention one other thing while we're here at the rotor cage before we, we leave. The, the red combine has the ability to adjust the transport vanes that are on the inside of the rotor cage. Um, there's a bolt right here if we zoom in on it and you can see the slot and we can loosen this up. We use an air ratchet uh, with a 916 deep well socket and there's uh, the bottom, the middle and then the one that's up on top and we loosen those up and we can rotate it. What we're doing when we change the pitch of these transport vanes is we're going to either accelerate or decelerate the speed at which the crop material is flowing through the rotor. On my particular red combine, when I'm in corn, I need to retard these vanes or stand them up straight, slow it down a little bit, give the combine a little more chance to let the kernels drop down and separate. If I don't, then I'm going to get a little bit of rotor loss. When I go to soybeans, I'm just the opposite. 
The, the, the pods come off of the stem pretty early uh, in about the first six inches or so and after that there, there's really not much separating that takes place it's all stems so we advance the veins in soybeans and I want to send the straw as quickly as possible out the back of the combine so that we don't grind it up we don't get any green silage if they're green stems uh, to drop on through and on down onto the sieves so on a red combine we have that luxury we can ad uh, advance them for soybeans and then when we switch back to corn then we retard it so that we don't get any rotor loss.